was just you can see the short pass indecision there Bateman just spooked uh, young Tuck and then the big fella McAvoy wraps up the arms and wins a free kick for incorrect disposal and that's the sort of thing that would lift any team to see a big fella that size be able to put on a tackle he's got to finish it off now I think we were lucky, Tim. It's starting to rain out there now. McAvoy, just two goals in his senior career. And from point-blank range, slots it through. The Saints have got their first. <laughs> to Gillum. Oh, and it slipped through the, the captain's fingers. Somehow they managed to regather. Franklin through the centre of the ground. Gets out wide and it was brought down with tough St Kilda here they win it and it goes inside 50 camped underneath it Schneider takes the mark if we go back to the centre Kelly it's the Stephen Milne tackle to dispossess which was the beauty he just stripped the hawk and we'll have a look at it here and Stephen Milne's tackling there is just absolutely first rate enables ball to get the quick kick into the forward 50 so Adam Schneider off had a bit of work on the hammies and the left footer from right in front. He drills it. All right, a let off for the St Kilda defence. And Colm Begley was the man who fisted it through. Gary, again, a little risky. Yeah, just be careful. Graham takes right. the mark. Warning comes to Brendan Whitecross. Graham finds Ray, who has blossomed into an elite footballer this season, the former Bulldog. At halfback, long along the line, and the lead comes from Gardner. He marks in front of Taylor. Gives it off by hand. Now Armitage, first game for the season, a late inclusion, bouncing ball inside 50, and Campbell goes out to meet it. It was an oh. awkward half volley. Show it, Makers comes in hard. Could have given away a free. Yeah. Instead, it pops out to Stephen, the debutant. First game, first goal. What a start. Well, he did it so well. I've seen the little fella couple of quick handballs he went onto his left side no problem there in heavy traffic he was able to get it onto the right boot 50 meters out back Brian a tape measure Brent ran off back in the middle he would have been a little nervous lining up for that set shot it was his first goal in AFL footy and now he is contesting the ruck with King. Hurried kick out of the pack. Sliding, diving mark by Schneider. Bounces to his feet and then kicks it up in front of Kaczynski. It's an awkward half volley. He gets a handball away. Back to ball. Spent the last three weeks in the VFL. Kick comes inside 50. Milne did everything right and then dropped it at the last minute. And a quick snap. A quick snap from Schneider. It's a bouncing, bouncing ball for a goal. How many times have we seen that this season? Well, just amazing. Just amazing. And uh, Luke Schneider, you can see almost a mill mark, clips up to him. He's right on the boundary line. He's on his preferred side. So he knows what it's all about and realises he has to bounce it, get the kick of the ball, get the break, and he executes to perfection. Today's players are just so skillful. We see it every week. We shouldn't be amazed because they do it on a regular basis. But Luke Schneider, goal number 26 for the year. That's probably his best. Important one for the Saints, but uh, mightn't yet be enough. They need another goal, I reckon, to at least go to quarter time, feeling they're on level terms. Hawthorne desperate in this quarter. And uh, Tuck personifying that there to Osborne, to Lewis, who's been very good. Rough head. Didn't hang on or did he? He did. No, he hasn't been paid, but he's kicked the goal anyway. And again, the Hawks are within three points. Travis Tuck really hurling himself in and starting that play for the Hawks.
straight at the camera lens like a boomerang. And Jared Roughhead juggles it. Probably a little bit of a hand there by Ref Clark. Umpire says you've got to play on. Doesn't worry, Ruffy spins around on the non preferred right foot and gets goal number 51 for the year. It's back to a three point ball game. Jared Roughhead, he's Stephen kicked King. two and goals in every game right. for the last five. A free kick plucked in the middle, and it will go to Hodge. Getting a few free kicks, the Hawks, but they should be because they are desperate and they are getting in first. Gee, it'd be a big win for them if they could take a lead into the quarter time break. They're mucking around with it here, though, and they've coughed up the possession. Jones to Stephen, and then just blazes away, bouncing ball inside, 50. Campbell meets it first, gives it over the top to Murphy. Terrific tackle. He's mown down by Schneider. His advantage play. Thomas. That is the worst non-advantage call I've ever seen. Thomas Murphy has an awareness problem. And uh, that's all happening behind the plate. But uh, Thomas Murphy's got to have greater awareness of what is around him. And again, a terrific tackle inside the Saints forward 50. Someone needed to stand up with their leading goal kicker, Nick Revolt out. Schneider's booted three in the first quarter. For a nine-point lead, they've kicked five goals from eight entries to the 50. I Campbell. like the kick in the theory of uh, Campbell Brown, just long down the guts. Absolutely, almost to the centre circle, but of course it can rebound quickly. Milne is there, he'll have three to beat, and he wins the contest with one of the hardest men to beat in the game, Campbell Brown. He runs around and he loves those, he devours them and he stretches the lead. I'm not sure I do like the theory. <laughs> I'm not sure I do like the theory of going long down the guts, Tim. Maybe that's a good reason why they don't do it so often today. It does have something to do with it. But it perhaps rebounded a little too easily. We got caught up in the Campbell Brown long kick, but gee, the Schneider kick was a beauty into the breeze, and Campbell Brown took his eyes off the foot. He lost his opponent. Good mark by Milne, good goal. Sometimes they can come unstuck, Rob. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if he'll do it. It'll be interesting to see if Campbell Brown kicks another long one down the middle. He's kicked two kick-ins after behinds, and both of them landed just about in the middle of the ground, but gee, that one came back quicker than uh, what he sent it away with. You can see there the clearances, the Saints starting to get the ascendancy. It wasn't that way in the first quarter. Free oh, kick. Oh, Simon Taylor's yes, added to his stats. Heat of Bam. Hold there. Heat of free kick man. Saints press again. Brown nearly outmarking Milne that time. And there is a... Some killer free kick. on his back. And it's Armitage to take it with the man on the mark about 35 metres out. They've got all their advantages wrong so far this afternoon. There's Taylor giving away yet another free kick. And that's the new instruction this week. I don't think he's too smart. You just got to uh, understand, you know, what goes on in the game, and uh, he just gives away blatant free kicks. So David Armitage from within range, but with the buffeting wind to contend with. Be a big goal if he can kick it. And he does kick it. And the Saints are outscoring Hawthorne against the wind. And if the first bump wasn't a free kick when he fell, Gillum fell into Armitage's back, it certainly was the second time around. They are going long down the middle again, the Hawks. And they might row front and square for the spoil that came last time. This time it doesn't. 
And uh, Hawthorne might make something of it. Rioli, but Dawson's in their path, the former Hawk. Now McGlynn, Geary's got him. Blake, ball, good move by St Kilda. Game opening up a little. Eddie as the Saints advance. McAvoy in some sort of a target up there. He's had a couple of shots at goal. He's been handy, Tim, the big fella. Way too far out here, gives to Jones. Both teams playing three Ruckman today. Jones, oh, shocking kick, horrible ball, but McAvoy's got it again. <laughs> On kick. A new, a new star is born. He's been terrific. He's been really good for them. And with Stephen King and Gardner both in the team, it just means that McAvoy can spend a bit of time up forward. And he read that kick really well. He started the day with two career goals. It's like he's caught one right on the beak as well. Well, they got him fired up. He's added one to that count already. Missed from another set shot. And he misses here. Ball stays in play. Kuzitsky's appealing for it. Won't get it. Some kill up. Can't capitalise here. Hawthorne. Oh, they might yet. She Graham had a chance. It slipped through his fingers. Hawthorne's defence. A rabble at the moment. And there's a St Kilda free kick. Go straight his back. Well, gee, though, yeah. was, was this a mark? Was this a mark by Kaczynski? Very much uh, like it, I thought. With all St Kilda at the moment in the second half of this quarter is uh, becoming a, a disaster for Hawthorne. The game and the season really getting away from the Hawks. Blake. Back in the direction from where it came, Hudgston. Now it's open up for them. Clark is away. Good composure by uh, Ref Clark there, Kelly. Could have blazed away, lifted his eyes and saw Gardner heading towards the goals. Um, Graham sniffing around saying, uh, I'll kick it for you. I reckon this might be beyond the big fella. For a ruckman, he is a very good kick. He's going to back himself in from well outside 50. <laughs> Just tried to give it a little bit too much, Rob. Well, he did. He's kicked 12 goals this year, the big fella. 12 goals, four, so he's kicked accurately, but not that time. Here's Campbell Brown, who will bring it back in play, and opts this time not to go the big bomb. Instead, across the face, just as dangerous. Comes off for them, though. Lewis has a runner out wide. Hodge, and then Kennedy. And now it's back to Roughhead, trying to... Grab hold of possession, he needs to get the handball away. Birchall, they're going to go backwards to try and go forwards. Lewis, centre of the ground. Rioli at the drop. He's away. And he sends it inside, 50. Franklin's one out. Can Franklin get there? Keep it in play. And he does just. He gets around Gardner. He's too quick. He needs to get around Hudgston, who charged in and wrapped him up. Gets the possession across the face of goal. And they're going to be caught here for holding it. Oh, you know, says, what, give it to me. If you're a St Kilda supporter, you'd be delighted with the tackling effort. Watch the tackle of Raf Clark coming up. Buddy hits it into space. Have a look at Raf Clark. Bang! And really getting the arms so there can be no release of the ball. Job not really uh, done if the ball can be released. Here's Kennedy to Shields. And he is within range. And Hawthorne are uh, crying out for a goal here in the last two minutes of the half. It's quite incredible, really, that a front half with Franklin, Roughhead, Rioli and others could be so impotent. But such is the defensive orientation of St Kilda and the effectiveness with which it's applied. Liam Shields. Hawks down by 18 points. He's hooked it out of bounds. Still down by 18 points. And in the end, it's going to be a pretty good half for St Kilda. Incidentally, at halftime, we'll be speaking to uh, St Kilda Premiership player and Brownlow medalist Verdon Howell. The Saints had a reunion of their 66 team here in Launceston last night. Terrific night. We'll hear a bit about it. Schneider goes for the long bomb. Big pack forms. No one can take the mark. It's knocked down. Out the back, running onto it, McQualter. Kennedy wraps 
him up. He stopped Great Kelly. Tackle. He stopped McQuilder because he looked forward. There was no one there. There was no one in one half of the ground, and uh, he backtracked and got uh, caught up. But gee, what a tackling game it's been. The Saints have had 66 tackles already, and that's the second highest for uh, half a game of football this year. Just amazing the number of hits that this team puts on the opposition. Frida Lewis to Mitchell. There's another tackle and a big one from Armitage. He rides him into the ground and Mitchell coughs up the ball. Well, it's extraordinary. I think in that game in which Collingwood beat Geelong a couple of years ago, Rob, it was 85, wasn't it, that yeah. Collingwood had? And it was regarded as a phenomenal number. We raved about that. St Kilda are well beyond 60, heading towards 70 in a half. I, I envy you, Tim, last night being with all of those past St Kilda Premiership players and champions. It was a terrific night. And, uh, 17 of the 20 were there, 19 are alive. Ian Stewart and Daryl Griffiths were overseas. Dying seconds of the half here. And again, Hawthorne can't yeah, escape. Can and the uh, their last grand scoring grand chance grand has grand gone. Grand the Saints are going to go to half time with an 18-point lead. And in a grinding doer game, that is a big advantage. They've had a good half, Rob. They've had a terrific half. And look, the Hawks have worked hard as well. That big fella there, he's just got to control his tackling uh, and, and you know, just silly stuff that he does. Gives away free kicks. Kennedy, that's an awful kick, missed everything and luck's a fortune, it lands in the hands of Rioli, over the top to Osborne, on the lead was Roughhead, that was ignored, instead goes Long, rather Roughhead at the top of the goal square, he needs to beat three, it was Renoff on the lead, Roughhead working hard but well outnumbered and the Saints clear through Grand. Got Kaczynski, not much pressure from uh, the Hawthorne forwards there, different story when the roles were reversed in the second quarter. Here's Schneider, McWalter running inside, just can't break with Hodge coming at him. Sits it up, and that's a free kick against Brown. It'll go to Mill. I think he just put, put the brakes on uh, Stephen Mill, and uh, Brown followed through on him. Stephen, where you are? And a goal here to get this lead out beyond four goals is going to make it very difficult for the Hawks. So Milne from 45, and he doesn't miss too many. It's his second, and the Saints are getting away. To the uh, wing position to defend, and left, left McAvoy in the forward 50, one out with Campbell. So Kaczynski, actually Kaczynski going two kicks behind the play. Getting him back near Buddy. So Ross Lyon making a few moves after the Hawks kicked the last two. Back to a 13 point game. Bateman dealt with harshly. Eddie gives away a free. Well, the warning went out to the clubs this week. It's a good example of that there. Bateman pressing forward again the Hawks. Clever kick. Kennedy to Osborn. No one running by. On the trusty left out wide and he releases the run of Gillum who gives it over to Lewis. And Lewis from oh. 50 instead of going all the way for home he kicks it to Kaczynski in the goal square. Well you'd have to say the Ross line move worked. <laughs> Not sure what he was thinking there. Shocking. Kick by Lewis. He had Franklin halfway screaming for it. He ignored him, went over the top, but he didn't go for home. He kicked it straight to Kaczynski. St Kilda now, though, intent on defence. Schneider to Hudgston. And this game has certainly taken a new turn. Right, Jordan. Dawson. Geary. St Kilda by 13 points in the last four minutes. Ball back from the bench. And he hits a target here. McWalter who played in that preliminary final and uh, didn't have a kick. Had three hand passes on that uh, ill-fated night last year. Finds Armitage here. 65 out. Milner's promising. Gee, and he's good hands.
in which to have the ball. The Armitage kicked him, an absolute beauty. And uh, Armitage coming into this team, his first game. First game this season. First game this year. And, uh, you know, everyone's talking about the players who go out. What about the players who come in? Hasn't played since last year's preliminary final loss to the Hawks. Well, they want to stake a claim. It's their golden opportunity. Mellon for his third of the day. He's missed it. And that's the blessing for the Hawks. They're still there. Late in the third quarter, within 14 points, that is close enough. A let off for the Hawks. Gillum back in board to Tuck. Came into this side this afternoon after spending the last six weeks in the VFL. To Murphy. And now Shields. A schoolboy. Only training with the club part time. Finishes year 12 this year. It's going to go long up the line. Kings underneath it. Taylor in front. Kazitsky awarded the mark. 50 metres, knocked the ball away from his hand. Ooh. Well, I'll see how far this is. Is that Taylor again? That's got to be, uh, well, he hasn't stopped walking the umpire. That's a 60 metre penalty. Might have been Lewis who was the offender. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting because this guy couldn't get into the game as a forward and uh, the coach moved him deep into defence about uh, four minutes ago. Took a mark in the defensive goal square. Another good mark on the wing, 50 metre penalty and now a chance to kick his first goal. Only five touches for the afternoon. He runs over 50 and he lets load. He's just nudged it across the face. So another let off for the Hawks. They're still in the contest. Saints have kicked eight goals for the day. Schneider and Milne have five between them. They might be a chance here as Hawthorne Muffet on the kicking. My ball. Go for an opportunity. The ball's kicked. Ball up as a reprieve for the Hawks. Season on the line. Frustrating year it's been for all concerned. Lots of injuries throughout. And the Hawks never really uh, looking the same team that won the flag last year. Another ball up. Ball. Still time for some scoring and a goal either way. Would be absolutely telling. Campbell Brown on Milne all day. Milne has two, probably should have more. He's missed a couple of times with gettable shots. Unlike him. Show and makers to Mitchell. Advantage to Hawthorne. They had a free kick if they wanted it. Oh, Lewis might have given it up again. McGlynn was brave. And so too was White Cross. And he comes out of it with a free kick. So Hawthorne's ball, about 90 seconds to go. Now Franklin has been the one to make things happen. A former wall here to Dowler. He runs into a similar wall. He just lofts and hopes. Lewis, Rioli, always danger when he's around. Tuck, Campbell, Bateman, Hawthorne building. Bit of urgency about them. Placement, Kennedy brave. Roughhead coming the other way, got his teammate. St Kilda defence closes in and holds its ground. And Armitage gets his kick away to the centre of the ground. Campbell takes the mark. The Hawks will come again. Bateman, maybe they won't. Ball, chopped it off. Good kick. And then he's got a runner. And this is McQualter. Kicked a couple against the Swans last week. Over to Graham, who just unloads from six. You know, some opportunities the last five minutes. The Saints get that second goal of this uh, third quarter with the wind at their back. What would you want the Hawks to do if you were coaching them, Rob? Try and construct a goal from here or play safe? Well, with about uh, 27 seconds to go, keep possession. Well, they might have kept it dangerously. They've given away a free kick. Luke Paul wins it, holding the ball. Now, his disposal here will be crucial. I doubt he could kick a goal from there. And he knows it. He's done the right thing. Clark now he needs to kick and get a mark. Running out of time. Jones from a long way wobbles it. Wobbles it home on the bell. The Saints get a killer of a goal. Clinton Jones kicked it. And if it's not a winning lead, it's taken them a long way towards it. 
You know, Tim, when the handball went to Clint Jones, I thought, you really don't want him to kick it. If anyone in that St Kilda team can butcher the footy, it's Clint Jones. But he struck it sweet and it just sneaked through. And that will hurt the Hawks because they were very brave in that third quarter, Hawthorne. Saints able to get that goal, their second goal for the quarter, just within a second or two. Over the top was Renoff. Taylor was actually in the ruck contest. And Stephen was dispossessed. Lewis tried to get a kick away, a quick snap. He was caught. Lewis goes again, fighting hard. Hurried kick out of the pack. And now who can run on and meet it first? It's Birchall. Back to Hodge, spinning out of trouble, forced to go backwards. Relentless pressure applied by St Kilda. And slipping over in the middle of the ground was Murphy and the Saints can burn. Did it well, St Kilda, when it opened up to them. No panic. No panic. They had that open half of the ground. And the big fella, Kaczynski, he had the confidence to pick up, run, have a bounce, sum the situation up, put the handball to Stevie Milne, who was able to kick his third goal. Just a real, have a look at this. <laughs> this is the slip that's just killed them. Good pick up by Kaczynski. Has the bounce, gives it to Stephen Mill, and uh, gee, you love that situation where there's force and kill the players. No one in front. A bit of niggle behind play. Buddy not happy with Joe Blake. His emotions spilling over. As McAvoy tops off a wonderful afternoon. Arguably his best game today with a big mark. And then kicks long, but it's all Hawthorne. Campbell takes the mark in front of Dawson. 50 metres, told Zach to come back. 50 metres. So 50 metre penalty paid here. Neither the Hawks. Zach had told you three times to come back. He actually went forward in there. And he was running over the mark, Dawson. So Campbell will take it. And the siren sounds decimated by injury. The Saints make it 19 straight. Their best ever winning streak continues. And that's just about it for the Hawks for this season. Last year's premiers are highly unlikely to be playing in September. The Saints will be. It is just a matter of whether they can get there without losing a game. It has been an extraordinary achievement as they go from strength to strength. They have dismembered Hawthorne today, the team that beat them by nine goals in last year's finals. Losing seven players of the quality that you did, this is a remarkable achievement. Yeah, definitely one of the uh, best wins I've been involved in in this club was Buddy Super, the way the boys dug in. I think we had 67 tackles at half time, and when we come down here, it didn't matter who was playing, it was all about our effort and the way we went about it, and it was just super today. And what about the tackling? I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, well, that's, our, that's our game plan, you know, pressure, and uh, you sort of you force teams into make bad decisions from pressure, and, and again, today was spot on, as I said, it doesn't matter who we've got playing as long as I can do that. What about the run? Can you keep it going? Oh, mate, we've got Essendon next week, I think, so that's all we're worried about, Cords. Yeah, and is, is it a burden? Nah, no idea, mate. We're just playing a week by week, the same old thing every week. Good on your sides. Good luck. Back to you, two. Adam Schneider, born-again football, revitalised footballer since moving from Sydney to St Kilda. We're going to hold it on the ground for the presentation of the Blue Ribbon Cup. Here's Zach Dawson. I reckon he's the happiest of the lot. Adam Schneider's pleasure at that win overflowed. But uh, here's the former Hawk, delisted by the Brown and Golds after last season. 
and uh, against a couple of the most brilliant forwards in the business. Uh, he did his job along with the rest of St Kilda's defence. Yes, the Blue Ribbon Cup uh, is played for by St Kilda and Hawthorne each year. Uh, it was established in 1999 in memory of two Victorian police officers, Sergeant Gary Silk, a Hawthorne member, and Senior Constable Rodney Miller, a Richmond supporter. They, of course, were killed in the line of duty at Moorabbin in August 1998. The St Kilda Footy Club supports the Blue Ribbon Cup as the officers lost their lives in the line of duty in Moorabbin. And Neil Cordy is going to be the Master of Ceremonies for the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, here to present the Blue Ribbon Cup is Jimmy Miller, who is the son of Senior Constable Rodney Miller, who was killed with his partner Gary Silk in 1998 in Moorabbin. And Jimmy, you're going to present it to Max Hugston from the Saints, so if we could call on Max to come forward. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, thanks to the crowd that come out today. Obviously to Hawthorne, fantastic match. Really means a lot. The police do a fantastic duty in our community, so this is just a mark of respect to these guys. To our boys, great work. Come down and travel. Uh, really put in a great effort, so thank you very much, and uh, off we go. Good on you. Also to Jimmy, I'll get you to present the medal to the best player. We'll call on Sam Mitchell for the Hawks. And for the Saints, Stephen Mill. Okay, thanks Jimmy, well done. Congratulations to the Saints who retain the Blue Ribbon Cup. The medals, the medals being presented by the uh, Police Commissioners of Victoria, Simon Overland and of Tasmania, Darren Hyde. So kill the victors, take the Blue Ribbon Cup as they beat Hawthorne by 25 points and they continue on their winning way. Despite all the changes that were made for this game, Ross Lyon would have to be happy with that. The Saints are still unbeaten. Deliberately or accidentally, St Kilda turned that game into a great challenge for their players and I think you can see their sense of achievement coming through in the reaction since the final siren. First 